Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? It's Steve from the North Carolina Zoo. Happy National Zoo Lovers Day, everybody! Woo! Gotta love Happy National Zoo Lovers Day. Any zoo lovers out there? Yeah, gotta love zoos! We're awesome! So here from the North Carolina Zoo is your Zoo Adventures program, and today we're at the... at the, uh... Rock habitat. Guys excited to see the rocks? No, not the rocks. We're here to meet some of our gorillas. How exciting is that? Check this out. And it's a sign. It's one of our graphics about gorillas. And you guys are like, yes, that's what we turned in to see. Graphics about gorillas. No, not graphics. Well, we're going to talk about some of these things. We're going to talk about that they're gentle giants. They're herbivores. Remember herbivores. There's your plant eaters. Wendy doing her magic, zooming down, talking about the sizes of these guys. Male gorillas, five and a half feet tall, maybe. Pushing 400 pounds. Stocky little strong animals. From the forests and jungles of deep Africa. I mean, you guys want to go to Africa right now as opposed to your living room. Is everybody doing okay? Is everybody doing all right with COVID coming in? Boy, what a challenge, huh? But we're so happy to be able to share the zoo with you and maybe take you on a little bit of a journey every once in a while throughout the week. I hope that's really benefiting you all. Do you want to meet one of the real gorillas? Wendy, can you show them Hadari down here? This is Hadari. Hadari born in 2009. He's kind of like, I don't want to say second in command because that's not quite true, but he is uh, the juvenile male that we have here. One of the older juvenile, the older juvenile male pushing 11 years old. He'll be mature, so to speak, now to about age 13. He shows our silverback a lot of respect. And he's our silverback's grandson. Wendy showing you one of our younger males. Oh, no, she's on, most, on Mo. She pointed to Mo. This is our silverback. This is our dominant male. Osuba born in 1983, pushing 36 years old. In Gorilla World, they have a really neat family structure, a, a neat social structure. It's typically a silverback male. Now, a silverback male is just a large, mature male, and their hair turns gray. Kind of like mine, they say. I don't know. <laughs> but their, the hair on their back begins to turn gray and they get that nickname, Silverback. Mo, looking at you guys. So the, the, the male is the dominant in the, in the family. He's making the decisions, when to eat, when to sleep, when to go, when to travel. Settles disputes amongst the youngsters in the family. Settles disputes amongst the females. This looks like Dembe coming in to say hi to Hadari. And believe it or not, there's some really unique ways to tell the difference. My, the way I can tell the difference is I talked to the keepers earlier. Chris Goldston came by and said, okay, this is what we got going on. This is who's who. It was great of him to do that. We appreciate him kindly introducing us to the gorillas that are here. So Dembe, we got some tips from the keepers on them. And it was neat when they talked about Dembe, they kind of, their eyes kind of lit up and they said, he is really, he's really a quick learner. We're gonna talk about training in a little bit with these guys. And they said, Dembe is a really quick learner and he gets along with all of the animals in the troop. So Robin was saying that, you know what? There's a chance that he could be 
a dominant silverback later. He could be a leader in a family group. It's neat that the keepers begin to get those relationships with the, keep, with the animals under their care. As Wendy's shooting out a little bit further, she's pointing over to, I believe that's Bomasa. Bomasa is another of our juvenile males, born in 2012. He was born here at the zoo. Anybody out there in digital land remember when Bomasa and Apollo were born in 2012? What's that make them? 2012, seven years old right now? Check my math. I think that's right. Going to be eight. Wendy showing you Apollo and Olympia. As you're looking out there, Olympia is on the left-hand side, kind of looking away from the camera. Apollo kind of looking towards you. He's sitting on a burlap sack. We saw him take that sack earlier. He was wearing it, put it on around his, like a cape almost, taking it with him wherever he would go. Now he's using it to sit on. Olympia, the female, she's on the left. She's the dominant female in this group, in this troop. There's another female, Jamani, and Jamani you can't see. She's way over in the corner. Maybe that, maybe Wendy can grab her just for a sec. But if you come back to Olympia, neat thing about Olympia, she was born in 1996. What was going on in 1996 in Atlanta? Do you remember the Olympics of 1996? Olympia was born in Zoo Atlanta in the year of the Olympics. How about that? And then laying down on his mat, on his homemade mat, is Apollo. Apollo is Olympia's son, born in August of 2012 again. And Apollo, because Olympia is his mother, and Olympia is the dominant female, Apollo can uh, uh, kind of get away with a little bit more in the troop. He's also very playful. But he wants to be the center of attention of the playgroup sometimes. Chris was mentioning if, if Bomasa and Dembe are playing, playing, every once in a while Apollo's like, you know what, you will play with me now. <laughs> kind of interrupting their little play. Wendy has her hand up. Wendy, do you have a question? <laughs> Yes, we were getting some questions if these are monkeys. If these are monkeys? If I let that ling if I let that question linger for a second, I bet a lot of people are saying, no. Nope. These are your great apes. They're one of a handful of different species of great apes. Easy, easy way. There's several ways to tell the difference between great apes and monkeys. But if you come down to simple, you're looking at the tail. The tail is missing in your great apes, in your gorillas, in your chimpanzees, your orangutans, bonobos. No tails on your great apes. Larger as well, but they're not monkeys. That is a distinction, use that term before, that trait characteristic of apes and monkeys. Monkeys have that tail, use it for all kinds of things, sometimes prehensile, sometimes not. Sometimes giving them an extra limb almost. Dembe and Hadari hanging out together. But gorillas, chimps, Bonobos, orangs, those are your great apes. Look at that mouth. If you get a chance, Wendy's really good with the camera. If she shows you that mouth, if he opens the mouth again, look at those teeth. What kind of animal, what kind of food do these guys eat primarily? Do you remember? They're plant eaters. They're herbivores. 
Check out this skull. This is a replica, if you guys want to know, which is awesome. This is a replica skull of a gorilla. And look at those teeth. But Steve, you said they're a plant eater. Steve, you said they were eating fruits. Sticks, branches, roots, leaves. Why does he need teeth like that? Well, those are a lot for display. And display meaning that they're kind of showing off. If I open my mouth and I've got these really big teeth, it might scare you. It displays that I could be, so I could be aggressive. Also, it might be used to break into some of the fruits, some of that material. But as an herbivore, you can really see those back grinding teeth. Oh, so I can open them up with that spring in there. Those grinding teeth, crushing leaves, crushing even sticks and roots, fruits, crushing that with those molars, just like you have. You've got those molars in the back of your mouth. You have incisors, not this big, or you have canines, not that big, but you have canines. And then these cutting teeth here. What do they eat? Oh. <laughs> I don't think I paid him enough attention. That was Mo. That was that. That's the, that's the dominant male in there, right? That's the silverback coming up to say, hey, you no, know, pay attention, here I am. Or maybe move away a little bit. Maybe you didn't recognize the skull. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to show you the diet. Now they're, now they're going to all reposition, and I won't remember who's who. <laughs> but check this out. The diet is really important. And the North Carolina Zoo is a leader in coming up with a, a unique diet for gorillas. We do not use any chow. We don't use, like, the little biscuits. We don't use things like that for the gorillas. They get exclusively this. This is again fake food. This is replica food. What do you recognize in there? What do you see? I bet some of you go, you know what? I had that last night or I've had that before. Isn't that cool? This is what the gorillas eat. They get fresh food, fresh fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables. In there, there was green beans, there's avocado, cucumber, peppers, romaine lettuce, looks like celery of some sort. Kale. How about that for a dinner, huh? And they do this for that heart healthy diet. They were finding, through some studies in zoos nationwide, they were finding there were some, there some heart issues in gorillas. Maybe possibly linked to some of those biscuits they were eating. Maybe they had too much of some materials. So the North Carolina Zoo started this practice of a heart-healthy diet. And they began to share that out. And we saw that we're getting better, we're getting better results from that heart-healthy diet for the gorillas. And can you imagine? I mean, look at this. This is a picture of Mo down here. He eats 30 pounds of produce a day, 30 pounds of green beans and plus green peppers, plus carrots, plus avocados. But it would be like you and I trying to eat maybe 17, 18 heads of lettuce every day, right? Now I like a salad. I'm not gonna turn my nose up at a salad, but 30 pounds of a salad? I don't think so. But again, these teeth are used for that. And then this crest, the sagittal crest, fancy science word, is where muscles attach. So muscles are attaching to this crest. And when you look at the gorillas, you'll see they kind of have a peak in their head. But those muscles that are attached to that crest enable that jaw to close so strong and grind up some of those really tough vegetation they might be eating in their natural homes of Africa. So this is actually important too. So we talked about teeth, talking about the, uh, this material in there, grinding up the food. So how do we find this out? How do we figure out what's going on? Well, the keepers here at the North Carolina Zoo with the gorillas do a lot of training. And I want to show you the training wall. It looks like the gorillas have left. I want to tell you, Wendy's going to show you the training wall. And believe it or not, because of the relationship the keepers have with their, 
with the animals under their care, they've trained them to do all kinds of amazing things. For example, they can do blood draws. Wendy's going to show you this really cool, and this is a graphic. We can't, we're not, because of COVID right now, we're not able to go in with the keepers right now, so we do truly apologize for that. But you can see some really cool stuff here. As the keepers are building these bonds, these tr this trust with their keepers, they're able to do some amazing things. And this is over at the training wall Wendy just showed you. So these are things you might be able to see when you come to the North Carolina Zoo once the North Carolina Zoo is open. So they're doing all kinds of cool stuff here. Looking at the teeth, um, they're able to do ultrasound. They have their hands up. You can put an ultrasound machine in there and actually do an ultrasound. They can do EKGs. They can listen to the animal's hearts. They can run those, those ribbons for the EKGs as well. And by doing this um, work with the animals, building up those relationships, building up the bonds, you don't have to anesthetize the animals, which can be dangerous. You build up that relationship, it becomes much more of a solid relationship between the keepers and the animals themselves. And I think that's really exciting to know that's going on here at your North Carolina Zoo, being able to do those kind of things. Let's see if anybody else is out over here. Jemani's on the wall again. Oh, Jemani, can you see, can you see Jemani? So Jemani did come out. That's the other female. Shout out Saturday is the 10th birthday for Juliana, Curator Hotley's daughter. Happy birthday, Juliana. 10 years old on Saturday. If you guys have time, we're gonna walk over to the other view real quick, see if we can, get a, see if we can spot them. I'm gonna grab a little cheat sheet and tell you some about the gorillas themselves on the way. As I mentioned, I don't, as a key, as not, as not being a keeper, I don't get to know, have the relationship built up as everybody does, as the keepers do. Oh, oh, I've been told to go grab something. Oh, look at that. Ooh, distancing. All right. Oh, here's another keeper coming down the path. <laughs> so we've got a lethal like, activity on the left-hand side as you go through, looking for food. We actually, we actually grow some of the food for the gorillas. Hey, Shannon. We grow some of the food for the gorillas here at the zoo. It's called Aphromomum. Some tracks here. So you're kind of looking for gorillas. And unfortunately, not always you can find them when you're out looking for the animals in the wild. Some fun facts about the gorillas. Thank you very much to Robin and Chris for putting some of this together for us. Mosuba, the male, a little more laid back. He's like, I don't want to be on television today. I'm done. I don't want to be on Facebook. A little more laid back. He's doing a great job kind of harnessing the energy for the juvenile males. He's teaching them very well. He's showing them how to be a male, how to be a silverback, which is kind of unique. As we mentioned earlier, in the family group, it's usually a, a male, females, and young. But Mo's done a great job of kind of harnessing the energy of those males, the other males that are here, into a little bit of a, a, little bit of a nice grouping. Olympia, the female, our dominant female. This is her on the left-hand side. Can you, can you see her over there? She's our dominant female. We told you she was born. Oh, Mosuba. <laughs> He's like, it's all about me. Mo's like, it's all about me. She's Apollo's mom. Jamani, a little more gentle, a little more laid back, but as the keepers told us, she does have a bit of a temper. So if she gets mad, she'll let you know it. She is Gomasa's mom. Some of the youth, some of the young ones, Hadari, the larger of the males, we met him earlier. He likes attention. He wants to see what's going on. Again, Hadari is Mo's grandson, which is kind of neat. Mo is not the father of Bomasa and Apollo, by the way. We have their moms, but not their father. Hadari is also very circumspect of people. He's, he, he does seem to really kind of pay attention to what's going on at the glass. Bomasa, our seven-year-old male, 
you'll see him, unlike most gorillas, you'll see him kind of stand up every once in a while. He, likes to, he walks around on his rear legs sometimes. You've seen a couple of the gorillas doing it here, but once in a while when they're running past us. But on habitat, you see them in all fours most of the time. So Apollo's unique in that way. He's half brother to Bomasa. So they both have the same dads and different females, different moms. Apollo, his brother, a little more playful. You'll see him out in the grass. And again, he's the one that's going to come and say, okay, if everybody else is playing, play with me too. We have a hand up over here. What you got, Wendy? You might want to explain why he is not the father to all of them. Oh, because their father was sent to another facility. Oh, next one. Was he back here? So we have a little bit of feedback behind us. You may have heard me talking. Um, Chris is here with us, too. He's back there practicing social distancing. But we wanted to make sure we got the information right. Nick, their father, passed away here. Um, so he's no longer here. And Mosuba was brought in um, after Nick passed away to kind of be that guiding line, guiding light for the two males that were here. I thought Nick had passed away somewhere else. So I apologize for that. It's awesome to have Chris here. Thank you very much, Chris. See? Using the resources of the North Carolina Zoo. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. So Nick was here. He bred both um, uh, Apollo, uh, Olympia and Jumani, producing offspring. Thanks. Great question. Sorry, but I should have explained that. My fault. The last animal and the newest animal that we haven't talked about yet is Dembe. We've mentioned him a little bit. He does kind of hang out with Mo. Demi, also seven years old, he's that quick learner. He's, that, he's the one who gets it. So when they're doing the training we mentioned earlier, he gets it. And he gets along with most of the animals in the troop. You kind of need to be able to share that. <laughs> so how do we know who's going to breed with who in the zoo world? Well, there's a program called the SSP, the Species Survival Plan. So the AZA, uh, all the zoos, the accredited zoos, have that monitoring program called the SS, called the AZA. They're kind of our governing body, kind of making decisions. Within the, S, within the AZA are several other groups. One of them is the SSP, the Species Survival Plan. And in the Species Survival Plan, animals, there's somebody who is kind of in charge of those animals. Somebody who's in charge of that species and knows the animals very, very well. Knows their history, knows their lineage, knows their parentage. When an animal, when they want to breed the animals, there's a decision made at that level, not at the zoo level. The zoo doesn't make these decisions. We're asked a lot of times, why don't you breed? How come you don't? Well, we don't because the AZA said don't. The SSP program said, nope, it's not time to breed. A little playful. <laughs> so that species survival plan that that leader of the ssp knows the animals that are distantly related you want to put the animals that are distantly related together you don't want to put animals that are related together so through that ssp program the breeding plans are made the ssp is kind of like a Oh, it's like a glorified dating service, right? It's kind of a fancy dating service. E-harmony-ish for the animals. And in, on those dating apps, on those dating services, you're trying to put the best, the most compatible people together. And that's what the SSP does. It puts the most compatible genetically distantly related animals together. We're part of several SSP programs here at the zoo. <laughs> little bit of play, a little bit of step back. <laughs> oh, somebody come to say hi. Like one of the females, maybe? Where's that? That's one. This is Hadari. This is Hadari? Yeah. 
So we mentioned earlier, Hadari likes to, look, likes to see and observe and check things out. And that's exactly what he just did there, wasn't it? What's going on there? Nikki put together a really cool activity for you guys. I'm going to sneak in front of the camera here. By the way, gorillas have a very distinct smell, very distinct odor to them. So when you're here sometimes, you're like, hmm, it smells a little different. If you're at the gorilla habitat, you can count on the gorillas having that odor. But let's check this out. This is a gorilla hand. This is a, this is a hand print of a gorilla. And you can print that out and compare your hand. I'm 6'3", guys. So you put a little bit of paint on your hand, and you can put it on that one. I didn't do it. I probably should have put paint on there. And you can get an idea. Again, I'm 6'3". What the? Holy cow. I'm a pretty big guy. Not even close to the gorilla. But you put a little paint on your hand, put it on there. Maybe you do it as a family. You can have a gorilla, dad, mom, Brother, sister, brother, sister, harem again, yeah. and see what that whole thing looks like, and you can keep a record of what it might be. So that's one little fun, quick, easy craft. I know. Sorry, turn my back on you. And there's a coloring page you can download. A little bit of facts on the bottom. Just a just a fun little coloring page. At this time of quarantine and put inside on a rainy day, because you want to get outside at your house. Get outside and enjoy the weather when you can. It's going to be nice this weekend, it looks like. And then, bless her heart, Nikki also came up with some other activities that you can do. Nikki's been hard at work putting these together for everybody. She's doing a great job of showing you out that. So, this is printing out the hand print, watch the animals. <laughs> to come to the park to watch these guys early, a little bit later on. They're very active. They're a lot of fun to watch. And you can kind of do your own study. Who's who? What's going on? The, there's a, um, a graphics that show who's who, so maybe you can learn them. We didn't get into the, one of the things you can actually do. You can look at their noses and determine who's who. So take a, pic, take a look at the pictures and look at the noses of the animals to see if you can tell which animal might be there, and it really works. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's zoo adventure about gorillas. We appreciate Chris being able to stop by and show us from a distance what's going on out there. Hope you enjoyed the craft, meeting some of the gorillas, learning a little bit about their personalities, where they're from, the diet program at the North Carolina Zoo, and they're growing some of their own food, feeding out exclusively vegetables, exclusively fruits, and none of those biscuits that create that heart-healthy diet. We have nothing on Friday. It's a holiday, it's Good Friday, so we won't be there. We're back at, with you next Monday, but Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, Zoo Adventures, 10 o'clock. So we're opening there. Wendy's got, Wendy's got a hand up. What do you want to say? Uh, marketing will have something very special for everyone this Friday. Oh, right. So stay tuned. That's we right. just won't be live, but stay tuned. There'll be some special um, things for you on social media. Yeah, so still come back and check us out and see what's going on. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in to Zoo Adventures today at 10 o'clock. I hope you enjoyed the gorillas. I know we enjoyed bringing them to you. Enjoy your holiday. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, everybody. Again, this is Steve from North Carolina Zoo. See you later. Bye.